Wonderful, lovely wife, Dr. Michelle. Join hand in hand today. We thought that'd be interesting to come in like that. We are M&M without, without the, the sugar. sugar. I know you think that's probably goofy, but well, it may be, but we have a good time with it anyway. Okay, so um, we want you to be encouraged. We want you to be blessed. We want you to be relaxed and stress-free right now and just kind of sit down and chill out for a few minutes and and pay close attention. You're, you're going to be blessed with today's subject matter because today we're going to be talking about something that is uh, very, very powerful and, and both of us have an extreme amount of passion in regard to this subject. And, and it's going to be on this idea of healing. And I just want to let that sit there with you a second, this idea of healing. You know, many times we hear at, at 4E, you know, within the, the practice, the Functional Medical Institute or just the the, the, the living 4E philosophy, we hammer home the idea of you being well and you being disease-free or you being free from a state of dis-ease. Well, to do that, you have to be healthy in four areas, physical, emotional, intellectual, and spiritual. If you're not healthy in one of those areas, it will have a debilitating or a deteriorating effect on the other three. You know, people can put all kinds of eggs in one basket and try to be all spiritual, but if they do that and neglect themselves physically, um, they're going to have physical issues. Or they can be uh, all physical and neglect themselves spiritually, and they're going to have spiritual issues. In either case, you will not be well, and you will be uh, in a state of dis-ease. There will not be complete peace there. But if you give time every day and spend time dedicated uh, time of that every day in those four areas, you're going to experience peace. Now, with that said, this idea of healing, I, I want you to really kind of listen today because we're going to speak from the heart today and hopefully communicate the heart of God. I did, there's, there's a massive difference between having a heart for God and a heart of God. Okay, so my prayer is that everyone out there will have a heart of God, not just for God. For God's great, of God is the best. Awesome. So with that said, I want you to get your Bibles out. I'm going to read a couple scriptures to you here that I want you to catch. The first one is going to be in the Gospels, the very first Gospel, the book of Matthew. Now, I've got my Bible here, and I've got it marked, so I'm going to go here quickly. But if you are if you have your iPad or your Kindle or your iPhone, I want you to go to this scripture right now and just read along with me. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 29 through 31. And there is a basis for why we're using this passage today. Listen carefully. Jesus left there and went along the Sea of Galilee. I've been there. It's a big sea. Okay. He went up to a mountainside and sat down. Great crowds came to him, bringing the lame, the blind, the crippled, the mute, and many others, and laid them at his feet. He healed them. Repeat that one more time, that verse. Great crowds came to him, bringing the lame, the blind, the crippled, the mute, and many others, and, he la and laid them at his feet, and he healed them. People were amazed when they saw the mute speaking, the crippled made well, the lame walking, and the blind seeing. And they praised the God of Israel. Now, we have dedicated a time throughout the course of this year to read through the entire Bible. Now, I have paid close attention, and the Lord continues to show shows me things as we get deeper into His Word, we get deeper into the heart of God, and our heart becomes more a heart of God. He continues to show me that healings are just as real today as they were back when our Lord walked this earth. He does the healings through, through 
people, as we as his disciples, that have the power of God upon us to pray for and to heal people. So healings are real. They happen every day. Sometimes we just have to open our eyes to see them, and sometimes we have to rest our faith in the fact that they do occur. When I look at the healings through the Word of God, okay, and I've tried to really pay a, a close attention and take inventory, you know, I see healings of the blind, the mute, the deaf, the lame, the leprous. I see blood disorders. I see fevers. And I even see many times the dead being raised to life. No argument there, right? Would you agree with that? These are what we see. We just read um, all but two of those things right here, or all but three of them. What I did not see in regard to this idea of healings. Did not see blood pressure issues. I did not see atherosclerosis or hardening of the arteries or the arteries narrowing because of um, massive cholesterol buildup. I did not see type 2 diabetes. I did not see joint and back pain caused by excess weight. I did not see fibromyalgia anywhere mentioned here. And I did not see something called chronic fatigue syndrome. Didn't see metabolic syndrome. Didn't see obesity, at least in the epidemic proportions it is today. With that said, hear my heart. Let me ask you this question. Are these diseases that I mentioned to you, are they created by man? Or are they just not mentioned in the Word of God? You ever thought about that question? You see, culturally, we've accepted these things as the norm. They are not meant to be the norm. Who created these things? Who did that? And whose responsibility is this? You know, when we talk about these man-made diseases, and that's exactly what they are, I want to remind you of something. Turn with me, if you will, further in the New Testament to the book of 1 Corinthians. I want to look at just two verses very quickly. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Right after the book of Romans, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. All right, now, listen carefully. Verse 16. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you? Question mark. Do you know that? That you yourself, your physical body, your person, the essence of God walking, the creation that he made you, you're the essence of God and his, you are his temple, and he, he lives and works and is and through us. Verse 17, if anyone destroys God's temple, God's de God will destroy him. For God's temple is sacred, and you, you are that temple. Now, he's not talking about a temple with mortar and brick and stone. He's talking about this temple called the physical body. What responsibility do we have to care for that? Man-made diseases are real. They're real. Now, Dr. Michelle, when, when, when I, we talk about this, you know, I'll get my dander up a little bit. I get passionate about it because we see people at the Functional Medi Medical Institute daily with these type of conditions, and we know the answers. I like to say we have a healing ministry. It may not be this um, um, healing ministry that's on television. It may not be a healing ministry that's publicized. But we heal people by the power of God that have these conditions because they're created by man. And we can give them instructions based on the Lord's teaching to fix these things. Now, we see this all the time, these conditions. Take us through these conditions these clinical names of conditions, and tell us what really is going on. Let's start with this first one, chronic fatigue syndrome. Tell us about that. Well, chronic fatigue syndrome that is not um, associated with another chronic medical condition that is not relieved by rest and is not caused by exercise, if that fatigue is still there over three months, it is considered 
chronic fatigue. Is that just a dump box for us to be tired due to a standard American diet and a nutritional protocol that is full of additives, preservatives, metabolic waste products, living off of caffeine, not getting enough sleep, and destroying a temple, we have to think about, is that chronic fatigue our own fault? Have we gotten off track and disrupted our own circadian rhythm? You know, our bodies come up with the sun and go down the, with the moon. We are designed to uh, live in accordance with how the good Lord appropriated our human bodies. And we have gotten away from honoring that just with our artificial lighting and loud music and, you know, uh, uh, caffeine and things that stress the system and cause syndromes of chronic fatigue and piled on top of that a horrible nutritional protocol that perhaps starts to change our body composition from the ground up. You know that little bit of middle that starts to come on around your midsection? That's not, that's not normal. That shouldn't be there. We have to start to look at that in accordance with what we might be putting in our system that might be causing that. And usually it's something that we're doing with our lifestyle that has gotten out of balance, either with nutrition, nutrition, eating too much, too many calories, not being accountable with too many calories, and then uh, eating late at night and getting our body again out of its normal natural circadian rhythm with when the body is producing digestive enzymes and can actually digest and utilize what we've put in it appropriately. You know, and when we start to get a little overweight, that change in body composition, it further moves into that man-made disease, diet, uh, obesity. You know, and obesity, if you think about obesity and the horrible chronic fatigue that comes from being overweight, when you carry around just 10 extra pounds, 10 pounds, that's 100 pounds in your joints with every step you take. Don't you think you might be a little chronically fatigued by the end of the day because you're carrying around weight that usually is not appropriate for what your musculoskeletal system has, ne needs to have on it. It's in the middle and it's pulling that spine forward and stressing the vertebra of your back and it's stressing the joints of your knees and your feet. Your feet aren't really very big and they take all the weight of the pillar that is above it. That, that could be an extra 100 and for some of us 200 and 300 and 400 and 500 pounds when we get to that 50 pounds overweight. So chronic fatigue can be a result of obesity and then obesity, that change in body composition, what starts to happen then is that our insides start to go awry with that metabolic syndrome and that metabolic syndrome can be picked up with the biomarkers when you go to see your doctor and what are those? That it's those little change in blood pressure, blood pressure starts to go up and your waist starts to get big and then your cholesterol panel starts to change. You have that little drop in HDL and elevation in blood fats, triglycerides or LDL. Those are all risk factors for metabolic syndrome and the onset of type 2 diabetes. So we can catch that stuff all the way back in the beginning when we start getting man-made chronic fatigue from that standard American diet that we're taking into our bodies and polluting the holy temple and being hypervigilant with our extreme stress patterns and not getting the rest that we need, further disrupting metabolism and getting that circadian rhythm off balance and disheveling the system from the ground up and not being able to get ahead of that fatigue, further causing internal endocrine damage, which eventually ends up in type 2 diabetes. And you mentioned a lot of these conditions, you know, and how they relate to one another that, that we mentioned here a moment ago. Man-made, correct? Correct. So let's just clarify this a second. This idea of chronic fatigue syndrome that has a name, but it has no cause. You can look it up on Wikipedia, which appears to be the expert source for everything. You can look it up on WebMD, which is very credible. 
right? In both cases, you're going to find these words. There, there's really no uh, pinpointed cause. You know, could it be that we're creating this stuff and we just come up with a name for it just so that we can have this name and treat the name? When the really issue is, why don't we begin to treat it as our own choice and our own choices are causing these conditions? Yeah. Type 2 diabetes, that is, that is epidemic these days, <clears throat> excuse me, with young people. I, you know, 40 years ago, as we age, we know that the pancreas is going to wear out. It's going to quit creating or secreting the insulin like it's supposed to. But over time, we've seen that age of acquiring type 2 diabetes go down. Is that because of our, our lifestyle? A absolutely. You know, uh, oftentimes <clears throat> patients will say to me, you know, I'm genetically predisposed to have type 2 diabetes. I'm just like going to get it. Well, that's not necessarily true. How about if we change the thinking about that and if we know that we have the genetic predisposition to diabetes, what on earth are we doing putting sugar in our system when we know that sugar is the cause of type 2 diabetes? And if we are predisposed to having type 2 diabetes, we should already be now thinking that we've got to treat this temple with either even more tender love and care and avoid it at all costs, not using it as an escape route or, oh, I'm just going to get diabetes, and then allowing ourselves to imbibe in that standard American nutritional protocol that makes us obese, metabolic syndrome, and then diabetic before it's all said and done. It's shocking to me, though, how we, we have made it um, accepted by creating things, and we've been deceived. We really have. It's, it's, it's one of the biggest deceptions, I believe, in in our world today, this acceptance that we're going to get sick. I, well, I'm just going to have to have a knee surgery, just getting old, I guess. No. How about we look at the cause of that, the extra weight? You said how much extra weight and what poundage is that equivalent to pressing down? Ten. Ten pounds. All right. This idea you touched on, it, metabolic syndrome, as you were going through those risk factors, I mean, I, I know you realize this, but folks, do you realize the risk factors that puts a person in a state of metabolic syndrome, there's a crossover there. Those risk factors are recognized by the American Heart Association. Triglyceride, blood pressure, um, HDL, L, all that, LDL. All those things are in there as risk factors for the likelihood to acquire coronary artery disease, which is the number one killer of all Americans, men and women across this great country. So even we're talking cardiovascular disease, even though the hearts can be born out of whack or something wrong genetically, we know that. But some of the conditions, we speed them up and make them happen faster, even cause them because of our own choices, correct? That's correct. You know, the Lord says, my people will perish for lack of knowledge. But when you get the knowledge and you know that your cholesterol is elevated, that your blood pressure is elevated, that your body composition is out of balance, that your vital signs are changing and you have that little genetic predisposition for diabetes and then you ignore the knowledge, then we're going to perish just as likely. Okay, I'm going to throw one at you. Osteoarthritis. I got arthritis. Just, I'm going to have to have arthritis. I'm going to get that, I'm going to get that just because that's normal. Normal or no? Well, arthritis, I, I, our bones do change through time. I would almost be afraid to look at what an MRI of my spine looked like because of all the athletics that I've undergone, all the weight that I've piled on my spine. I know that my bones are changing just as hormones change through time. Those bones do change, but what's the degree of inflammatory osteoarthritis that we have to tolerate and is it exacerbated by a poor nutritional protocol and things that produce inflammatory mediators and aggravate that osteoarthritis. So yes, we may be predisposed to having osteoarthritis as a genetic factor and we may have osteoarthritic changes as we get a little bit older but what degree do we actually have to suffer from the pain and dysfunction of that osteoarthritis could be directly related back to how much pollution 
we overload our system with and then how much extra weight are we carrying we said that 10 extra pounds 100 pounds to the joints that is pounding away at every single joint and taking your tower off track so we're going to end up with an increase rate at which we get osteoarthritis and, and understand um friends we're not this is not about uh picking us apart individual or pointing fingers i mean both dr michelle and i walk on this path too and it's important to understand you know what you put in your mouth affects you physically what you put in your brain affects you spiritually affects you intellectually and all that together affects you emotionally so it's our choices that we have and we create these conditions and we've almost taken to the point where let's create these conditions and uh, let's, let's first of all, let's go see if we can get a pill to fix it. And then second of all, we maybe go get a supplement to fix it because surely if we take the right pill and the right supplements, that'll fix the problem. The real problem is what we're putting in our mouth and if that doesn't work, guess what we do then? It's time to pray. Time to pray. It's time to call the prayer chain. It's time to get somebody to pray for me. You know, and, and look, I'm a father, you know, um, three wonderful children growing up. You know, if they came to me with a problem, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try to give them the answer. If, if I had the answer as a good father, I'm going to give it to them. But I can't make them do that. And the Lord tells us what to eat, when to eat. Uh, and, and exactly described it for his word. We, we've we been through that, and we talk about it here over and over again. It's all over our website. You know we stand. And the same time is, if we choose to do that, and then we keep going back to the Lord again to fix it. I mean, don't you think, at some point in time, he loves us so much, don't you think he wants us to learn something? Don't you think he wants us to grow up we're being children about this, really. We're being so juvenile because we, we choose to have knowledge and ignore it. What we're saying to people today, I don't think is foreign. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. I mean, we're hearing it. Mm -hmm. What do you think, I mean, this is kind of just, I want, I want your opinion as a physician. What do you think the main roadblock is to people not adhering to the correct use of this knowledge to prevent these man-made diseases? Well, that's a very complex question. You know, we, as a society, we live on the run. We don't plan well. We get in a hurry. We have all kinds of social events and gatherings that, you know, are, are um, the, the foundation of nutrition is, is broken. And we have to go all the way back and recreate our culture so that our society as a whole can, can get better. And we are easily influenced. We get under stress. And what do we do? We emotionally eat. We uh, go to events and we know that we shouldn't be eating things uh, because we have blood sugar issues. But there's that birthday cake and we want to be connected and we want to feel like we're part of the group. So we imbibe in that birthday cake and then we have that little drink of wine. And before we know it, we're off the train for three and four and five, six months when it just started out going to a birthday party. Yeah, and I, I know we've, we've mentioned this before, there's no consequences really attached in the moment in time we do these things, it's separated. So we right. see these conditions, you know, chronic fatigue syndrome, even heart disease, coronary, coronary artery disease, we see blood pressure, we see cholesterol, we see obesity, we see arthritis. These are developmental things over a period of time. They don't just happen overnight, correct? That's right, I mean, it, take, it takes, three months to change a lipid value, to change a vitamin D level. It takes eight, we, eight to 12 weeks to heal an ankle sprain. So foundational nutrition, cha nutrition change isn't gonna happen just overnight. We've gotta get on that train and stay on it for life. And especially as we get a little bit older and our hormones are now starting to change and our organs have a little bit of mileage on them, our innards are not as forgiving and not as accepting and not as understanding and they don't have a reserve like they did when we were younger. So we're pushing that engine just a little bit hard and we can't afford to get off that track. Yeah, you know, um, we, we had a guest in the show recently, uh, Kathy Campbell, who said something that was very profound. She said, I wanna uh, die as young as possible. And, uh, and I found that very interesting because we're talking about um, 
maintaining or 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 fighting with her own choice this natural death and decay process. As we age, I mean, let's face it, we are born to die. But but I think we should begin to care for this temple. You know, the whole idea that we're talking about today is don't create things over and over and over again and then go back and ask God to fix it. You know, I think um, the, the greatest thing that's happened in our society regarding the the bad side of this is we've been deceived. I think we have been totally deceived. And uh, friend, we have people all the time, I want you to take small baby steps, we have people every day, wouldn't you agree that, that come in and they say, well, I just can't, I just can't stop doing that. Well, there, there's a stronghold there, you know, and it's not something that is an easy fix. We, it, 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 it's not going to be easy to turn that ship around and go a different direction. It's just small baby steps. And friends, we want to actually encourage you right now to take those baby steps in. As a matter of fact, strongholds, this area of our relationship with food is a stronghold. It's a deception. And we want to pray for you right now that thing's broken off of you. So if you want to be free from that thing and let God begin to work in your life, I want you to stop right now. We're going to pray for you. And the prayer of faith availeth much. We're going to pray this prayer of faith with the belief that you will be healed. Healed. I want you to get up and walk and be encouraged. So let's pray for the folks right now out there. So if you're there, I just want you to just uh, bow your head or stretch your hands to the TV, whatever you do. Father, I thank you so much for every person. I thank you for faith. I thank you that you uh, set people free every day, that healing is just as real uh, today as it was yesterday, and it'll be just as real tomorrow. We have the faith to believe right now that by your power, people will be set free. I pray the strongholds of addiction and food are gone. I pray the strongholds of deception are gone right now over you, sir, over you, ma'am, over you, young person. I pray that those things are gone forever, that they are broken, that those deceptions, there's going to be a confusion in those demons that have caused deception in your life, and they are going to flee. We cast those things out right now. We proclaim freedom over your life. We proclaim, proclaim passion over your life to live for God and care for the temple that he has provided. We call you free because who the sun sets free is free indeed. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. People are getting free, and, and we teach that over time. If you've been free, connect with us. Let us know. We want to celebrate that with you. You know, I, I enjoy seeing people get healed. It may not be a conventional understanding of healing, but it's real. And, you know, today we want you to be free and be healed. Hope you've been encouraged. Pray for us, encourage us, connect with us on our newsletter, and stay in touch with us. We love you so much. And Dr. Michelle and Dr. Mark, we are out of here, and God bless you.